Hey guys, welcome to the Tracer rework video. Tracer has always been a odd hero because she's been a dive assassin that's also been kind of a strange dive sustain assassin because if people are able to keep her with shields healing over times, she can stay in the backline for quite a while since a lot of the people in the backline rely on skill shots to do their damage uh, and supports generally don't have a lot of options, especially since a lot of support CC is skill shot oriented. She can dodge nearly every skill shot if you are playing her at a really high level, which makes it to where just throwing a Malfurion heal allowed her to stay for a long time. She really struggled against Burst though, because she had rather low health, and so if she got focused a little bit, a Tastar shield, a Zarya shield could allow her to survive the Burst. The downside is that once she took that Burst damage, even with those shields, she had no sustain, which made it to where she had to pretty much leave the fight afterwards. So if you combine her with something like a Malfurion healing over time and a Zarya, it's really powerful. Or, Tastar could give a 75% increase of lifesteal until he was nerfed. Uh, not nerfed, reworked. Um... Now we've got Tracer in the position where she needs to rely a little bit more on her own. She was nerfed so much because of all these backpack heroes that made her feel overpowered, that now that these backpack heroes are being kind of adjusted, she also needs an adjustment. With that being said, let's get into what they decided to do with her. So there's a few changes that I'm gonna mention for those that are familiar with Tracer. Um, her ult charges based off of how much damage you do. Uh, so you see, I was at 0%, I did one full clip into a target, or magazine, depending on who you are. I believe they call them clips, but, uh, but, uh, they should actually be called magazines. But I, I know I've read something that they call them clips, but again, they are, I mean, I've, I haven't seen them, but I, they visually look like magazines. Anyways, without getting into all of that, um... One magazine was able to do, or one clip, whatever. I'm going to call them clips just because that's what everyone else calls them. Uh, one clip was able to do 7% um, of your ult. Now, they've increased... They decreased your damage, but they increased the rate that you charge your ult with both your auto attacks as well as your W. So your W... Um, also gives a significant more of your ult charge. So you see, I've done now um, one full clip a half a clip and an auto attack and I'm a fourth done with my ult already. So it is a very, very quick ult to charge now. And what they've decided on doing is making it to where she's gonna stay in the fights longer. They gave her more health, more health regen. She's gonna get in the fights, stay in longer and constantly meleeing using her ult and repeatedly doing damage over the course. Rather than being an in, blow up someone and get out assassin, she's going to be an annoying pest that just floats around. And that's what her base kit changes have made her to be. But let's look at her talents. Um, but before we get into her talents, because her talents might change this, but before we get into her talents, for those that are unfamiliar with Tracer, let's talk about what her kit is. Blink allows you to blink. I mean, move to a short distance. Um, this is not considered a an actual teleport. So if you try to go over a structure, even if you you have the range to do so, your character tries to go around that structure. You cannot blink through a structure. Um, there are few structures that you can blink through at different angles. For example, there are cases where tracers have blinked through in tombs. There are cases where tracers have blinked through Tassadar walls, um, as well as um the zombie wall so there are interesting whether you consider them bugs or just that you can blink through summoned walls and not necessarily physical walls is up to you on how you want to consider that if they are bugs then i apologize for even mentioning if they're not bugs then whatever um that's what blink does you can use them all quickly to get into a fight recall back out after doing something major so one of the common um, strategies that people would do is they would, uh, if they see a target that's low, they blink in three times, pop their ult, and then they will use their recall out. Uh, they do a decent chunk of damage, about half of an assassin or uh, healer's health, and that is a great way to where if you see an assassin or healer in the back line that's low, you can dive in, get a kill, and then get out. Uh, it's an aggressive playstyle, but it's it's what sets like great tracers from good tracers apart is being able to like notice exactly when someone's low enough to where you can use all of your abilities, kill them, get out, and then continue DPSing. So it's a really great tool. 
With that being said, her next ability is Melee. You deal damage, and it's a significant amount of damage, too. 500 damage. Um, and then you gain 6% of your Pulse Bomb charge, and when it's used against a hero, it's 12% of a pulse bomb charge so a very powerful ability high burst damage relatively low cooldown uh, and good charge for this again what sets good tracers apart from bad tracers is the ability to get your ult off multiple times and utilize it in as many different ways as possible uh, i even saw a pro tracer who was using bombs on turrets like almost repeatedly and he was constantly topping siege charts just because he was charging up his ult really quickly by bullying heroes and then he just walk up and ult a turret and then charge it up on heroes walk up and ult a turret and he did it over and over and over and he was constantly getting like 100,000 siege damage in games because and he was just wiping turrets before people could even like deal with it he still got to harass a lot but he just did that so it's like getting creative with your pulse bomb. i'm not telling you to use your pulse bomb on turrets i'm just saying get creative with your pulse bomb um then we have recall they nerfed this in a way and they buffed this in a way they made the cooldown go from 30 seconds to 20 seconds but they also made it to where you only move back two seconds ago rather than three seconds ago so if i'm sitting here and then i take two seconds fighting and I recall, I'm going to end up back here. But before, it used to go three seconds back. So you saw when I did my combo really slow, um, I actually appeared halfway through it. So if you do the combo quick, and then you use your E, you end up back to where you were. But if you do the combo slow, if you have a little bit of ping or something that's just causing issues, or if you're just not too confident with it, and you do Q, 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 Auto, W, you end up halfway through. So it's going to take a lot of practice to get good at that. Then we have Pulse Bomb. You've been seeing the Pulse Bombs go off. Pulse Bomb is a skill shot that is very short range, um, but it does fly rather quickly. So if you do fire off a Pulse Bomb, this is essentially what it's going to look like. If it lands on the ground, it still blows up, but it usually won't hit someone. But if you hit someone with it, uh, it will stick to them. And even if they move around, it will still be stuck to them. So that's the benefit of Pulse Bomb. If you're good at it, it's always guaranteed damage. If you're bad at it, it's likely just going to sit on the floor and do nothing. Which is why some tracers will get creative with it and use it on structures. Um, but in team fights, it's invaluable. I mean, it's the ability to blow up one backliner um, from half their health to nothing and immediately turn this fight because again if the healer takes just a few too many aoe's from maybe one of your mages you just boom healer's dead and then you're back out of the fight and you're just dpsing their tank again and tracer's dps is nothing to scoff at either i mean even with the reload being the way that it is uh you can see that tracer is doing about 350 damage and that's without talents 350 dps without talents is pretty solid so now let's get into those talents. Oh, well, let's talk about reload for a second. Tracer can basic attack while moving. After attacking 10 times, she needs to reload over 0.75 seconds. Tracer can manually reload early by activating reload. Basic attacks now heal Tracer for 15% of the damage dealt. This was something that was part of a talent that usually wasn't picked because it competed with other talents that were very good. Now you get to combine that with other talents that are very good. Uh, so this, again, allows it to be more of that annoying pest that just lasts for a really long time in these fights, dodges all the skill shots, and out heals the amount of damage that uh, auto attackers are trying to do. So she's going to be very, very interesting in that playstyle. Less of a jump in, blow up one target, and more of a stay in their back line. So let's talk about these, these talents. 1-2 Punch. Reduce the cooldown of melee by one second, and it gains an additional charge. This will allow you to jump in, tag someone twice. So where I said that she's in there for longer fights, this gives you more burst potential because you could go in w r w and burst people a lot more than you normally would this also synergizes with some later talents that may not be in the game anymore oh like bullet spray where your w uh now hits everyone around you so and it increases the the radius of melee so you can use it for wave clear and with the lower cooldown you can really wave clear or you could just go in the middle of their group and do two big w's aoeing everyone in their back line and possibly getting some big abilities off parting gift this was a later talent, um, and it makes to a recall leaves behind three bombs that do 548 damage apiece. Just so you know, 
I said that melee was a very high damage burst ability, and Parting Gift does more damage. Um, it also is going to be giving you 5% Pulse Bomb Charge. Now, this is a little unreliable. There is a strategy to knowing how this is actually going to activate. So if you have Tracer standing here and you activate it, you can see that there's always a Pulse Bomb going where she's aiming, right? And then the other two Pulse Bombs will always go in the other directions, which means that one, they always go like this, this, and this. Which means the bare minimum, if you are comboing someone, you can guarantee that you're at least going to land one. Because you are going to charge in W, R, E, and that, that one is always going to hit. So you see that burst went from 1500 damage up to 20 or 2500 damage um, when I also included in a, a little bit of auto attacks as well. So that is the benefit of Parting Gift, is while it seems a little random, it's actually not, and it's going to help you lower the cooldown of Pulse Bomb. Um, Tracer Rounds. Increase your basic attack range by 10%, which her range was just reduced, so this actually just brings it back up to where it was before, and it reveals heroes. So these are three different play styles. Um, the, I think both of these can add to the burst play style. This also adds to the sustained play style, and this is pretty key for the sustained play style. Now, on to level 4. Leeching rounds used to compete with level 13 talents. Now it says increase the life leech of your basic attacks against enemy heroes by 5% for each blink charge you currently have. So if you're saving your blink charges, this is going to make it to where you have 30% increased healing. Um, but you should be using your blink charges to do your best at repositioning to where you're taking the least amount of damage. So this is a give and take. Um, you take less damage by avoiding something but then you also heal less so against auto attackers this is a great way to win trades by just not blinking and against mages you can blink and avoid all of their damage so it's a give and take that's gonna allow for a little bit more skill pulse generator successfully sticking a pulse bomb to an enemy hero heals you for 25 percent of your maximum health over 1.5 seconds and refunds one charge of blink so since you're most likely going to go in blow up someone and then you're going to use your e um, you could actually go in, blow up someone, and then move away and get your charge back and then use your Q out in case you don't have your E. Again, it's kind of a sustained playstyle, um, but it could also help that burst playstyle. And finally, is that a health pack? Empowering healing fountains and regen globes, as well as collecting a regen globe reduces the cooldown of a healing fountain by 10 seconds. Uh, because you have naturally lower health than most people, Fountains are a little bit weaker, especially since you don't have mana either. Uh, so this is a nice little benefit that allows you to get more fountains. Um, overall, I think these two talents are very powerful. Uh, I think this is going to be decent if you're on like Braxis and always fighting near globes. But at the same time, if you're always fighting on Braxis, Leeching Rounds is very valuable. Uh, and if you're always getting bombs, Pulse Generator is very valuable. This is one that is going to be relatively easy to determine what is the best talent by simply watching like 10 competitive replays and going, okay, well, you would have gotten this much healing here, this much healing here, this much healing here. I think this one is just straight healing, this one's straight healing, and this one is also a, a blink charge, which could also be used offensively. So in the competitive scene, this might be a little bit better, but at the end of the day, it's a numbers game. If this heals just an overwhelming amount, or if this heals just an overwhelming amount, um, then they'll just come out ahead. Level 7, uh, we have Slight of Hand, uh, Slight of Hand, um, reduces the reload time by 50%, this equals 20% more damage per second. Focus Fire, unloading a magazine on an enemy, oh it is a magazine, okay cool, I can stop calling it clips. Um, unload a magazine on an enemy does bonus damage, so if you do uh, an entire magazine, 35% of the total magazine as far as extra damage. And then finally, we have Locked and Loaded. Reactivate Reload within the last 50% of its cast time to increase Tracer's basic attack damage by 40%. If you are willing to really learn Tracer, this is kind of a no-brainer. 35% increased damage that's situational, 20% increased damage that's just flat, and Locked and Loaded, which is 40%, that if you're good at it, is just flat damage increase. Um, so this is just the best talent if you're good at it. If you can get it every single time, it's just the best talent hands down. If you're just learning Tracer, Sleight of Hand is kind of the best all around because you need to be switching targets a lot. Um, I always thought that this should have a percent health piece to it where it's like, because you're focusing on one target, it should do percent health. But this is the closest if you're good at focusing one target. It's the closest to locked and loaded. 
but locked and loaded is the best if you get really good at tracer so it's really debatable um i personally think focus fire is close because it's relatively easy to do but know something that this is bonus damage that's actually magic damage this is bonus attack damage so this is actually going to increase your healing and this won't so this talent is still so much better this talent if you're worried about survivability or if you're taking this talent this talent might actually shine a little bit more than focus fire it's a rough one but if you're willing to to learn if you want to be a good tracer you got to learn locked and loaded level 20 or sorry level 10 sticky bomb increases the radius and the slows it's surprisingly good especially if you're going to be comboing it with something or helping out with your team quantum spike is the competitive talent they have nerfed it even further it's it, it was 10 percent, then they bumped it down to eight then seven now six um, but with its lowered cooldown or the ability to cast more of them, you're going to have a smaller chance of blowing up a backliner, but a higher chance of just getting more sustained damage off using your ults on tanks. And then finally, we have Pulse Rounds. Uh, increases the Pulse Bomb's range and cast rate from basic attacks against heroes by 100%. Because you're charging it faster, this means more bombs. So you almost just turn your bomb into a sustained damage ability rather than using it as like a blow up potential. Again, Quantum Spike still gives that extra damage for if you're just trying to go in the back line and blow up one target really quick and then get out. Um, so it's likely still to be the competitive pick here, but I do think that the other two are closing in. That is my personal opinion. Um, I will probably do a... I'll talk to Mockery for a little bit, who is a Tracer player, Tracer main. Um, and I'm curious to see what he thinks about this after the dust settles a little bit. I'm sure on his Twitter he's talking about it already, but I would like to see after the dust settles, after people have played it for a few weeks, I'd like to sit down with him and see what he thinks is the final build. Let's talk about level 13. Jumper, blink grants shield and reduces cooldown. So when you blink, sorry, when blink has no charges remaining, its cooldown refreshes 125% faster, meaning more than twice its cooldown reduction. Um, Casting Blink grants Tracer a shield equal to 6% of her max health for 3 seconds of stacks. Uh, that's pretty good. It's actually really good. Uh, again, that annoying playstyle. Untouchable. Blink's range is increased by 33%. Takedowns increase your basic attack damage by 5% up to 30%. The bonuses are lost on death. It makes you kind of a focused target if you take Untouchable. But uh, this is the only talent that's actually like... It's usually the only talent on its tier that increases damage. So... At the very least, even if you've got a couple takedowns, it's a decent amount of damage, but it does kind of turn you into a Feast or Famine hero. Telefrag. Um, passive. Basic attacks against enemy heroes reduce the cooldown of recall by 0.1875 seconds, meaning it's out of expending one whole magazine, it's going to reduce it, your recall cooldown by about two seconds, give or take. And then when Tracer arrives at her recall location, nearby enemies are knocked back and take damage. So if you... This is a weird one to plan out, and it's not a lot of damage. 351 damage is not a lot. Um, so if you were able to plan this out correctly with Parting Gift, you could do kind of a weird build uh, where you go with... You, you stand near someone for a while, right? And let's say you're just doing damage. And then you Parting Gift and do Burst. It's a weird build. It could work. Don't get me wrong. Um, I don't think it's worth the commitment. So I don't think this is the play. I think it's going to be between Jumper and Touchable. Jumper makes you really hard to kill. And Untouchable is going to increase your damage by a little bit. I feel like Jumper is better. But I feel like Untouchable is has potential. Especially if you're playing rather safe with her. But if you like the safe play style of, of Tracer, like huge shields, low cooldown on blinks, yeah, I don't know. Hard to give up. Level 16, we have Bullet Spray. Uh, this was the AoE melee that I talked about, increasing the radius of melee, uh, as well as causing it to do more damage in, in those range. Um, or sorry, not more damage, just uh, damage all enemies in range. It's great for wave clear, and it's decent for, for fights. Um, and remember that it says uh, on this... When using melee against a hero, you gain 12% against a hero. Well, let's see if we gain more. Let's turn off toggle cooldowns to toss the ult out. And boom. Even though we hit three people, we only got 12% ult charge. So remember, this isn't going to increase the rate that you're getting that ult charge. Um, and just to double check. That went from 
24 should have gone up to 40 something and it went to 39 so um yeah so it does not get multiple if you hit multiple people heavy-handed you're sit by melee of their armor reduced by 15 remember since we're comboing that means 15 percent more damage so if you start your combo off with melee that's a lot of damage and then finally we have ricochet you have a 60 percent chance to hit another nearby hero prioritizing heroes and you will be gaining more life back with this as well so this gives you more sustained damage uh, if you combo this with locked and loaded, it's extremely powerful at doing extra damage to people. So that's really, really good. There is a downside to Ricochet, however, which is with the new mechanics of the turrets, if you're shooting at a turret, it'll bounce past the turret and it will hit a hero, which then makes the turret prioritize you. So you have to kind of have a really lame play style because it's not great. Um, but during team fights, not sieges, this is a great talent. Um, but I do think that if... Depending on how sieges go, if your tank is not tanking for you, you may actually want to be taking heavy handed and just trying to do combos on your own. Uh, and then finally, we have level 20. We have chrono triggers. Blink empowers ammo, causing uh, your blink, sorry, casting blink causes basic attacks to not consume ammo for one second. So again, when you have lower blink cooldown, that's a pretty interesting idea. Uh, because then you can have one second that you continue shooting without it. And if you're just blink, blink, blink and during that whole time you're not burning any ammo uh that's pretty big now i'm loading an entire magazine suddenly got a lot uh worse and reloading got a lot worse as well locked and loaded got better though so remember that this talent could make your other talents worse so be careful about that get stuffed Increases melee pulse bomb damage charge to 24% and hitting an enemy hero with melee who's stuck with a pulse bomb causes the bomb to instantly explode and knock target away. So if this didn't knock the target away, this could add for some like really crazy combos with a double uh, melee charge and that may still cause some pretty crazy combos as well. And then we have recall can restore health so you gain the health back that you lost during that time this was the meta pick for a long time but we're reducing the time that you have with uh this and the amount of survivability you have now this talent got a significant nerf and then finally we have composition b successfully sticking a pulse bomb to an enemy hero also drops another one at their feet or deals 50 percent of the damage and explodes slightly earlier so while this one causes a bomb to instantly explode and get knocked away this one can allow you to get an extra bomb um and so there's actually the possibility of running and this is the one that i was actually thinking of for the combo so one possible build if you still want that blow up potential is you go the one two punch after the one two punch uh you're most likely going to be going for a bomb because our goal is to successfully stick bombs and get blink charges back then after that, you go locked and loaded for the sustained damage. And we're going to be going sticky bomb because we want to slow people so it's easier to land the next bomb. And then we're going to be going into um, most likely jumper because we want to go in and have a huge shield. But I mean, yeah, we're probably going jumper because this, we don't want extra attack damage. It's okay, but our goal here is to blow people up with, uh, with melees. We're going to be reducing their armor so that we have a higher chance of blowing up a target. And then we're gonna do composition B. So the basic idea of this build is to go in, ult, melee, melee, and then you're going to blow up one target like three times, if it all works out how I'm assuming. So you're gonna be using Q, gaining shield, Q, gaining shield, ult, W, and you can only actually, because there is a cooldown in between the charges, you can only actually get one off, but look, that's still a good amount of damage. So let's say, for example, you do this. Um, and, and not to mention, you've got two charges of your W. So you can get this combo up pretty close, right? You can get really decent with getting your charge up. And now that we're there, um, we just have to reload. I might as well pop our reload as well. Uh, and then you just go in, ult W, and then you hit them with all of that. You'll have your second W, and then you can leave. That's 4,277 damage. That is still the ability to pretty much drop someone. But you don't always get the opportunity to get to level 20. So let's see what this is at a more reasonable level. Uh, if you were to take this build, most likely this is what you're going to be looking at as far as your... Um, your sticky bomb goes let's say at level we're just gonna say you only have these talents 
Um, once again, we need to charge up our, our ult, right? So we're going to use our, our W to charge up faster. And we're going to make sure that we're using our, our trait with all of our reloads. And again, the trait thing, you just need to get it to muscle memory. I recommend just sitting in a try mode and just getting it to where it's muscle memory. Then we're going to wait until we have our W back up. Um, once we have our W back up, we're going to go in, ult, W, and then we want to try to get that second W off. And there we go. We walk away. So even then, that's enough to kill a backliner. And you've got shields the entire time that that's happening. This build is still good enough to blow up a backline and have sustained damage. So I think that this bomb build with Sticky Bomb is a potential build that is actually pretty good. You're getting a lot of healing because you are also blowing this up, which is going to heal you over that time. You're getting a lot of shielding uh, and you're turning a lot of blink charges. You're using three blink charges, then you're going to get one back from the cooldown reduction and you're going to get one back from Pulse Generator. So you can just use your Q to get back out and save your E for another opportunity. I think this is a decent build. As far as the rest of the builds, there's probably the potential for an auto attack build that is all about just playing safe. You go tracer rounds to get extra range, you go leeching rounds so you survive longer, then you go locked and loaded for more sustained damage. Most likely you're only going to be popping ults um, just to finish people off, or you could use your pulse rounds for more sustained damage. Then, and I'm not recommending this, I think both of these would still be better for an auto attack build, but uh, it's a potential for it. You can even go untouchable because you have this longer range and uh, you're going to have more leeching. You're going to have just more options. You'd go ricochet for the extra damage. And then finally at this level, I would imagine because you're trying not to consume ammo, you'd go chrono triggers. And the whole build would look something like this. You auto attack, you're going to trigger your passive, and then you're going to try to use your, your dashes to keep it going for longer and then keep your passive going. And then you're going to charge your ult faster. So you're just going to use your ult off cooldown and make sure that you've got those reloads going. If someone's chasing you, then you get that extra duration and you continue to charge up whatever you can. This sustain build actually does a decent amount of DPS to targets. But yeah, I still probably wouldn't go this. This doesn't feel that good. Um, so I would probably be going with Quantum Spike to finish off the targets that you're getting low or Sticky Bomb to give you more time to hit a slowed target. So those are my options with that. Let me know what you guys think about new Tracer. I will likely be doing a video um, with a couple of the Tracer players to see if it, I'll, I'll ask them to see if they want to do a video together. Um, and this could be a great way to see after the dust settles where she ends up. But let me know what you guys think about new Tracer in the comments down below. I can clearly see one or two potential builds, possibly more, and possibly a build where you don't try to synergize too much. You just take strong talents on each tier, which is kind of what Tracer did before. So with all of that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to check out my other videos.